Now, open communication, not only is with your business, but if you have a spouse or significant other, you have to communicate with them. Now, if you're by yourself, you need to communicate with yourself and tell yourself what you can and cannot do and what you should and should not do. Okay? I'm just telling you, you got to have open communication. Okay? Because open communication is going to help you a whole lot, especially when you have somebody else involved in it. And it's their money and your money, and you combine your money together as a family. Now, some of you guys combine money together. Some of you put have a bill fund, and you have your own separate accounts. Some of you have money at all in one particular account. However you pay your bills. You still need to have communication because one needs to know what the other is doing. If you're having a joint account, you cannot be the one who's always taking money out of the account and never putting money in. Okay? Because the other person is not going to like that unless y'all have some type of open communication agreement. Okay? And it's better to do that because you get a better understanding of other perspectives. Okay? Here, Transparent discussions. Open discussion by financial situation with your spouse. Transparency is very, very crucial because it brings out and unveils upfront and working toward a shared financial goal. And that's what you want for your family. You want both of you all to be on the same wavelength. If you can get both of you all on the same wavelength, outstanding okay because it's hard when two people are trying to go to the same place do the same thing but have two different directions it doesn't mean that you're not going to get there but you're both going in two different directions but when you combine your income and combine your transparent discussion and go in the same direction with your, your power for your partner you will get there faster guaranteed understanding each other's perspective now, this is going to take some communication work here. But if you understand each other's perspective and prioritize debt concerning each other's perspective, and you're adding and aligning your financial goal, it can make you your debt get paid off faster and a strong commitment of getting out of debt. And that's what you want. You don't want debt. You want to be out of debt. Okay, you want to be out of debt much and quick as possible. Okay, let's talk about collaborating budget creation. If you don't have a budget, a spending plan, okay, or you have a joint budget, you got to address this financial responsibility, including all the debt repayment, and ensure that both you and your partner are aware of the plan. You just can't put the plan together and say, here, you may have to explain it to the person. Normally in situations, especially dealing with spouses or partners, one person is always more financially astute than the other one. One person is a spender, other person is a saver. I don't know, because they, you know, they connect, okay? Opposite attract, that's what they say, okay? And that's a lot of time, that's what it is. And even happens in the financial world. And even through you put your spouse or your partner. Opposite attracts. Okay, I want to say this. Most people don't understand this. They say they marry for love, but why is it when they get a divorce they don't say we, we're gonna break we're gonna break up the love we're gonna divide the love they don't divide the love they divide the financial spoils. So not only do you marry for love, but you marry for finances too. If you did not marry for finances while we're doing a divorce. You will ask for a breakup you won't have. Hmm, something to think about, something to think about, something to think about, okay? So look at the collaborative budget uh, creation. You want to share sacrifices, okay? Identify areas where both partners can make sacrifices. Not just you, not just your partner. Both partners have to make sacrifices in spending, okay? So you can allocate more funds to a debt payment. You gotta pay off the debt. You gotta pay off the debt. You wanna share the commitment to expedite the debt free spending process. You can become debt free if you come together with one idea, one common goal. You're sharing the sacrifices, you're paying the debt off faster. That means you get a chance to invest and to do the things that you really wanna do. Okay? 
That is it. Reduce financial stress. Man, who wants to be in stress? Trust me, who wants to be in stress? That can be very stressful. Emotionally support from your spouse is invaluable. Okay, you got to have this emotional support from your spouse. It creates space for discussion, finance, uh, concerns without being judging, uh, arguing, uh, fostering uh, negative connotation. But you want to foster a supportive environment, okay? You want to acknowledge and celebrate milestones in your debt repayment journey, okay? How can you do that? You can do it when you when you reduce the financial stress. You can celebrate. This positive reinforcement can strengthen your positive resolve and motivation. Okay? Open communication with creditors with your spouse can lead to a clear understanding of your financial situation, reduce stress, anxiety that's associated with the debt. I'm telling you right now, if you got stress because you're in debt, you really want to get off of you. Okay, why? You want to be able to sleep at night. You want to be able to go to place and do the things that you want to do. You want to be able to do that. Okay, you can pay off the debt faster too. Collaborative efforts with both creditors and the spouse, both of y'all combined within the household, can lead to a more effective and efficient way of paying your debt off much faster. When you have a debt repayment strategy, you can accelerate your journey. To financial freedom, you accelerate that journey to going where you want to go. And guess what? You get an opportunity to keep that interest in your pocket. Why? Because it's your money. You should have your money work for you as long as possible. You work for it once. Your money should work for you for the rest of your life. Okay? Let's look at no spending policy. Oh, now I hit a nerve on that one. No spending policy. No spending. You mean I got to have a no spending policy? What do you mean by no spending policy? No spending policy. Man, I can't spend no money. Now you got to have open communication. Now you have a no spending policy. You have to have open communication with your spouse. Okay, you got to have that. A significant other, okay? Or uh, even with yourself. You got to sit down and write some things out, okay? You got to address the holiday debt. You got to negotiate with creditors. You got to alleviate the financial stress. Those are things that you got to do, okay? And you can only can do this if you have a no spending policy. No extra spending policy is really the key. Not just a no spending policy, but a no extra spending policy, okay? Consider a itinerary no spending challenge. Okay, here we go. Now, that's going to be hard, but that's the extra dose spending challenge with you and a spouse. Meaning, if you don't have to have it, if it's not essential or necessary, that means you're not going to buy it. Okay? If it's not essential or necessary, you're not going to buy it. And you can set a date. We're going to start this no uh, extra spending challenge on um, uh, January the 15th, we're going to do this for 60 days and we're going to see exactly where our money, we're going to do this for 90 days, we're going to do it for 120 days, do it for six months and we're going to take all the extra money that we would spend, we're going to pay it off on our debt and see how well that helped you to pay your debt off faster, okay? You got to differentiate between needs and wants. We all have needs. Believe me, we all have needs and we all have wants. We all have needs, we all have wants, okay? So you got to distinguish between the needs and the wants, okay? What you need, what he say you need versus what you say you need versus what they say you need, okay? What do you need? What is the want? You know you got to have a house. You got to have shelter. You need a transportation. You have food, clothing, okay? Yeah, those all are needs. I, I just want a new car because the other car don't look good. That's just a want. If you cannot afford it, then that means it may not be the best thing for you at this particular time. Now, I did not say that you could not get it, but maybe at this particular time, you cannot get it. Okay? Let's look at what it's going to do. It's going to help you regain financial control. Gain financial control control. Regain it. You lost control. It's going to help you bring your spending plan into 
subject them to your budget and to your uh, income that's coming in. And next thing you know, you're going to be in control. But right now, you may be out of control. And it just might not, you might be just a regular person, but you might be just spending. You're out of control spending. You just spend all, you spend everything, everything and all the time. You may be out of control, okay? So you want to take a look at that, all right? Budgeting is the next one. Budgeting uh, as a spending plan, expense control, okay? You want to establish clear spending limits with a no spending plan. And ensure that essentials are prioritized. You got to have those, okay? And you can have a structured approach that have both partners, not just one, but both partners, okay? You got to have, you got to find the limits. Once you define the limits of what we're going to do, what we're not going to do, then you write those limits down. Once you write those limits down, you need to take it and put it up on the refrigerator. Put it on your cell phone. Put it on your mirror in the bathroom so you can you can view it every day. You can put it on the dashboard of your car so you can see it when you're getting in. So you can understand where you are going. Because if you don't define the spending limits, what good is it? No extra spending policy. If you don't define the limits, you have to define the limits. Okay. And what you can do is you can adjust and reward yourself regularly. So, hey, listen, we got this big thing come up. We have a tire. Oh, man. We don't have money for the emergency plan because emergency plan because we have already spent it all. We have an extra tire or we don't have enough money in the emergency plan. Now we got to go and spend some money on buying some tires because we have to go to work. Okay, we had to get kids to school. We had to go to grocery shopping. Those particular things that are needs, you have to need to do those things. So you have to adjust uh, your, your spending plan and your budget control. Do so, okay? But remember, the key thing is when you have a no extra spending plan, is spend no extra money, okay? You want to negotiate your debt, okay? Collaborate with your spouse to, to develop a a negotiation strategy okay for debt how are you going to pay the debt off okay joint negotiation strategy we're going to pay this off first we're going to pay that off second we're going to do this third do that fourth when we get through that we're going to take this money over here and we're going to put it over there we're going to pay that particular debt off okay you got to know how to pay your debt off so both of you all need to get together and strategize you, you and it's gonna be a compromising agreement, okay? To be prepared to be compromised and, and reach an agreement for both partners, okay? So this is a joint effort. It's not. It's just not an individual effort. It's a joint effort that found a sense of shared responsibility and accountability. Uh, accountability, excuse me. Shared responsibility and accountability. You gotta be accountable for where the money is going. You gotta do that. If you're not gonna do that. For the use of a, of a no spending plan. Okay, no extra spending plan. Here we go. Let's talk about it again. What a no spending plan does, it really reduces stress and financial tension. Man, why? Both of you are making decisions jointly. You probably bring you both closer together. You're talking more, you're talking about bills, you're talking about life, you're talking about the future, and you're having a joint decision making. Uh, effort, okay? And and, and, and it, the joint decision plan either the burden of, of both partners. One partner don't have to do it by themselves. It's a teamwork approach. It reduces stress associated with financial challenges. It's just not one partner. It's a shared responsibility, okay? And you're sharing goals, okay? You're sharing goals. You are sharing goals. Whatever goals that you would achieve, both of you are responsible for reaching those goals. So it's a shared effort, okay? Let's let's look at the last one. Continue to monitor and adjust. Continue to monitor and adjust. Continue to monitor and adjust. One thing that I do want to say that uh, uh, even though, you know, you have these no spending policy, you still have to have an open line of communication. And you communicate on a daily basis. I want to you sit down at the table to do your bills so everybody know what's going on in the household, okay? You know, sometimes you may even want to have a family meeting. 
call it a family financial meeting. You bring all the kids together, everybody, your mom in the house, bring them together, and you sit down and talk about this is what we, this is what I ain't cut me, this is what's going on, this is what we're gonna have to do for the next several months. Why? We're trying to get out of this debt. And we get out of the debt, then we, our reward is that we might be able to go here on a nice vacation. If we get out of debt and we can pay cash for that particular vacation. You are telling them what the problems are, but you're also letting them know how you're going to do it because you have to take things back away from them. Nobody likes things being taken away, okay? But also, <laughs> excuse me, also what you are doing, you're rewarding them once you reach your financial goal. You're rewarding positive reinforcement enhances motivation, and that's what you're doing. So you're reducing reducing the emotional toll of debt payment on everybody. Not just you, but everybody knows, hey, if we do this, we get a chance to go, let's say, to Disney World, okay? That's it. You want to review and adjust, okay? Maintain open communication. Discuss regularly, you know, your plan with you and your family, okay? Make adjustments if needed, okay? Make sure it is real and realistic and sustainable. That's it. No spend policy. Set a time frame. Sit down and get a plan together. Pull the family into it. Uh, work out your plan. Also, then reward yourself. Okay? A no spend policy. Here we go. Then you want to build a financial safety net. Yeah, look at this man going across where he was going across. He got a safety net. What you're saying is, listen, I'm in the sky. I have no, I can't walk on water and neither can I walk on air. But if I have a safety net, it'll take me from one place to the next place just in case I have a problem, okay? Here, optimize your income expense, expenses with grace. You want to optimize that. You want to use it to the best of your ability, okay? To achieving your financial balance. That's what you want. You want financial balance. That's what you want. How you get that? By exploring additional income streams uh, that fit your skills and schedule. Now, if you got to go to get a side hustle, you got to get a side hustle. But it has to be, it needs to be a side hustle that, that you like and fits your schedule. Okay. If you don't have to go get a side hustle and you can adjust back your spending and you have your free time to do whatever you want to do, then you can do that too. Whatever it or however you're building your financial safety net, you do it. It is your net. You have to build it. Okay. You have to leverage additional income streams. Explore additional income stream that align with your skill set and schedule. It doesn't have to be a full pledge side hustle. Okay, it don't have to be full pledge at all. But just think about it. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do Uber for two days a week to bring the extra hundred bucks. Okay, to pay off the debt. That's it. You have to have a financial escape plan. Financial escape plan, yeah, it's called a it's called a, 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 a um, emergency plan. If you don't have an emergency plan, you have a savings plan. Do you have something stored up just in case something happens? It's not an emergency fund. Do you have that? It, but it acts as a financial cushion for when your income is low during periods. During low income periods or during overspending periods, this financial uh, emergency safety plan will help you out, okay? Because it does a couple of things, okay? It's like a safety net, okay? It is. It's a, that's basically what it is. Because you establish an emergency plan, okay? With the financial escape plan, is basically just an emergency plan. That's all it is, okay? And it's going to allow you to invest. So when you optimize your expenses, okay? Or you might take out additional jobs or side hustle. You got your escape plan. You established your emergency plan. You got all those things in place. Now, and you start paying your debt off. Once your debt is paid off, you can start investing and grow your wealth. Because remember, it all is just a plan. You don't have to get back into debt. You don't have to get back into debt if you don't need to get back into debt, okay? You can grow your wealth. The next time when it's time to 
do the uh, the holidays, you can you can sell some stocks, pay cash for all the Christmas items or over the items that you may have overspent on, and have a holiday ease and have a, a new year full with laughter and joy and less stressful. Okay, and also the last one, never by all means spend more than you make never spend more than you make if you do that you will always be in debt the final word is holiday wisdom okay never spend on one day that it would take you 12 to 18 months to pay off never spend on one day that it's going to take you 12 to 18 months to pay off if you got it like that that's a different story. If you don't have it like that, again, never spend on one day that would take you 12 to 18 months to pay off. Enjoy your holidays. Don't overspend. Financial wisdom word, remember, paying interest makes the financial issue richer and you poor. Let's read it again. Remember, paying interest makes the financial issue richer and you poor. You want to reverse that thing. You don't want to pay interest. You don't want to pay late fees. You don't pay over the limit fees, okay? You don't pay any of those credit card fees if you don't have to, okay? What you want to do is pay your debt out to a point that the interest that you have been paying on the credit card, now you can take that particular interest and invest it and make yourself richer, okay? Uh, the fifth the credit card fallout, here it is. We talked about the objectives and that's facing fallout, tightening the budget, the spending plan. We talked about cutting the excess fat. We got to do that. We got to prioritize the debt so we can get it paid off earlier. You got to have open communication with, with your spouse and with the, the business contacts and implement a no spend uh, policy anywhere from you know 60 90 to to, to uh, six months and you got to build a financial safety net with with a safety plan a safety escape plan you got to have building your wedge you can't spend more than what you make okay this is our objective for today here we did the training command no objective we always talk about strategy to kill and increase debt how to build and increase your credit and credit score, how to build wealth through different business strategies, leave a legacy for your family, and effective tax strategies. That's what we're talking about. Are there any questions? I want you to stay tuned to the next video that we're going to be talking about. We're going to go back into credit cards, and we're going to talk about how to make free travel, talk about the free hotels, okay, with credit cards, we're going to talk about that. But first, before we talk about that, we're going to talk about credit card reconsideration. If you apply for a credit card and you didn't get it, what to do to ensure that you get it, okay?